hybrid op um, options. And the two use cases that we're going to talk about, and I'm going to hand the reins over to Steve here for a second, is basically a single project. We're going to talk with multiple development sprints, kind of what I was just talking about. And we're going to compare it to um, um, an example that Steve has where he has multiple projects that are dependent on one single product sprint. So I'm going to hand it over to you, Steve. Um, okay, well, yeah, I mean, I guess we'll just talk through that a little bit. You know, so if you're just a, a software company um, making a product, then you probably just have a single project. Like, you know, there's some other tools out there too work this way. The project really never ends. It just goes on and on and on and you continue to make the software better. And um, what we're talking about here, and I'm, I'm just going to use our company as an example, is we have um, development objective objectives for our product project insight all the time. So there is a track for that where we have things that we in our backlog that we know we want to do that are part of our roadmap that are things going on. And then at the same time, being that our tool is pretty customizable in that we do a lot of professional services around our company, we've got waterfall projects that are being run by the success teams that they're training people they're doing. It's a schedule. There's trainings going on. There's uh, tasks, dependencies going on. But during those onboardings, you uncover, oh, well, we need to do this little tweak to the product or we need to do this little custom report for them. And most companies, I think, are like this. We don't have a special development team for every single success adventure going on. We, we have the same team basically matrixed or doing everything around the product, whether it's a feature for somebody or whether it's something in, in, a, in a project that we're doing for a client um, during onboarding or an existing client. So what you're seeing here out of Project Insight right now is just a regular burndown chart. The only difference in this burndown chart from any other kind of burndown chart and maybe other tools is that this particular sprint is covering multiple different projects going on. So here we have multiple deliverables for each different client going on, some DevOps things and some, some customer things. This allows the development team to see, here's what we want to do in the next two week and a half uh, across this, this particular sprint. But as they, they work in the tool, it updates the, the world, the waterfall project. So we actually have waterfall projects that have backlog tasks that go in the sprint all at the same time. And, you know, they can, this way the PMs can see their projects in their view and then the development team can see projects in their view. So I think this is a pretty common scenario that a lot of software companies have where you have a team that's not just on one single product all the time working on one thing forever and ever and ever that they are a matrix development or IT organization requiring their own timelines because our in our tool, the timelines follow the the sprints follow what version we're trying to release. Mm -hmm. And so then what happens is the success team can say, hey, I need this feature or this thing that, we're, that we promised somebody in such and such a sprint. There's a meeting that we get together with the success people and the dev team and we decide, okay, this is in and this is in, this is out, this is in. They go through each of the backlog items and decide, is it in or out? And then that's the goal of the uh, dev, dev team to do all that work. So I think that that's a common scenario and the the other scenario is you start off with maybe a kanban style project where you don't know everything you go into a waterfall modality and then you go into a sprint and then you go back to a waterfall i think there's that's a common thing we see too where there's sequent there's times where you have a project that it goes it's not that the project stays a methodology the whole time. You use all the methodologies as you go. Like you might be going into Kanban and then waterfall, then agile, and then back to waterfall again. Depend, you know, maybe at the very end of your software product, you've got to roll out some hardware in a bunch of uh, uh, of stores. Then you're back. You're you, you know you made the tech piece in agile, but then now that the tech piece is ready to go, you have a waterfall schedule of rolling it out to every store. If you're like, um, you know, some kind of retail outlet or, or a, a restaurant or something. Yeah. I mean, I think it's really, you know, I mean, the fact that your the project insight tool can support those very 
those different and varied types of engagements is great. And, and, you know, we have the burn down chart. So for when you're, when you're doing your sprints and you want to monitor those particular sprints, you can see, you know, how you're progressing to that. And I love the fact that you can then at the end of that sprint, you can automatically update all of the dependent projects that might be sitting as waterfall. And, you know, then they can continue down their path because, you know, I think you mentioned it earlier, Steve, is there's years ago when this all started, everybody wanted to do everything agile. Right. And then it's like, well, it doesn't quite work that way. I mean, I don't know about you, but I don't know many organizations that can put dedicated resources on a project team, like 100% dedicated. Now, to your point, the product team might be. Yeah. But not on your professional services or any kind of custom because it could be that your types of resources you need, you know, if I have a, de- if I have three developers on a team and two analysts and one QA person, but it's very complex and I need, I need an extra developer. I can't just make a business analyst an extra developer. You've got to, that, that doesn't work that way. And I might have some people sitting around without work to do because the expectation is that those teams are working full time on that project. So, so the fact that we have, swung that pendulum to like, we want to do everything agile and then trying to figure out and have tools like project insight that can support that hybrid model is great because I think that's, you know, we need to have those options. Yeah. I mean, I think that that's the, the future is definitely, you know, you don't want to go in and say, well, what kind of project am I doing? And then you're locked into that methodology. And then the other challenge that I think people end up having is you end up having to double enter the work. Because right. you're using one tool for one team and another tool for another team, why why do that if you don't have to? Right. Um, but you know this isn't all about the tool. It's definitely about the processes, and that's how you should be looking at it. Whether yeah, you, the, tool, you know, the tool needs to be able to support those processes. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Mm-hmm.